Okay, we're gonna try this again. Um, this is like the fourth time my audio hasn't synced up. What we're working on here is a pair of tongs that I've been wanting to make for a while. I got the chance, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Most important about these is that they would act a lot like channel pliers. Uh, we'll call it that. The bit will look normal, the boss will be extended, and it's made out of one piece. Uh, I see a lot of farriers do it this way, so I thought I'd try it. It's the twist jaw, if that's not your thing. You can still do this, you just have to forge that rectangle from a vertical rectangle to a horizontal rectangle. I'm going to twist jaw them. Work them hot. You shouldn't have any problems with cold shots. I haven't so far. I'm just laying out where I want to set down. Where the boss is going to start. Where the boss is going to end. Now this style of doing it, uh, it's a mirror image right down the middle of that bar. So the marks for that you would put on, say, the left side would be on the right side towards the other end. You'll see later on, it's a little more clear. Uh, the punch is just so I can find the marks later. Since this is kind of an experiment, I want to do uh, everything as cleanly as possible. I do drill the holes in the boss, which I've never done, but I thought maybe it would be prudent just so everything lines up and matches up well. Don't look at that little orange string in the corner, or it'll drive you nuts. Work the edge of that anvil in there. Give you a nice place for transition. I like using these videos as a video record for myself. Um, it, it, they come in handy. I was looking at something not too long ago, and I, I saw me doing things that I didn't know I was doing. So you get the idea. You see this end is a mirror image of that end. Only it's flipped on its axis. I think I've made like three pair using this split down the middle method. And I really like it because I like this stock. It's half inch by one inch by however long you care to make it. And it's also nice stock for other things. It's just like a nice, nice size to have around. I 
this next step is going to be cutting that line down the middle. Now watch, if you've never made anything like this and you're interested in doing it, you don't actually cut to the very end. You're cutting where your, your boss is ending and beginning its transition up to the handle. That's done hot. I'm just marking it. Oh, there's also another addition to this. I decided I was going to put that in this too. Uh, oftentimes in farrier tongs, you'll see that they put a, a big round divot in their bits. I believe this is to reduce surface area, which increases your clamping pressure. To save time, I edited out some of these cuts, but I obviously, I think I pretty much cut where it's already hot, so I totally, totally missed where I wanted to heat this up in the forge. I don't know, this has been done a week ago. that heat forward. I wish I could play the actual sound, but I wouldn't have to do this recording. But I listen to a lot of podcasts, and that's not something I want to talk over. That's like my ASMR. I like the way a chisel sinks into hot steel, and I like the way steel squishes when, you, when you're stretching it out, drawing it out. You get into a rhythm, you can almost go too far. Well, you can.
thought I could force that end open too. Still too much it needs cut. Charlie the dog stealing something for sure. The other day I found my glove out there. And one day I found a wire brush and the chewed part was the wire end. Okay, that's an idea of what happens when you when you split it. See, when you twist that bit, you're going to end up with something that looks like you're used to making. And like I said, if twist jaw isn't your thing, you could forge that rectangle down. It's going to be a little work, but... Another thing about this stock was uh, it's it's thick enough and wide enough uh, using a 3 8 pin to have enough meat around the holes to ensure that this doesn't crack or break. I don't even know if I explained that all the way, but basically the reason the boss is, is twice or so what it should be is because there's going to be two holes in that boss. Same with the other boss. And you just put your rivet in hole number one or hole number two and pin it in there with a spring clip. The whole idea with this is to give you the same kind of benefit that, that you would have with a channel plier in the sense that you could fit a couple different sizes properly in the bit. It'd be nice and square and, and full connect full connect. However, by shaping the reins right, you should get the rain you should be able to get the reins to come almost to the same point with either size stock, which you can't do with a single pivot. You certainly can't put a quarter inch piece and a one inch piece in your tongs, single pin tongs, and expect to use them very effectively. With this you could. And of course, by cheating a little bit, which I think everybody has at some point, you know, you're not, you're not limited to just one particular size. You can cheat a little higher or a little lower. I, by the time, well, like I said, it's been a week. I did use this pair yesterday and today. And uh, I, I, I can actually get, I mean, think about it. You can, you can throw sheet metal in there. Uh, the, the first jaw is set for about a quarter, quarter inch thick stock but it'll hold sheet metal just nice, just fine. Or anything like eighth inch, it'll hold fine. So basically we're going from sheet metal to quarter inch in the first hole. And in the second hole, of course you can cheat up and down a little bit too. It 
I think the next pair I make, uh, I will separate the holes even more. That would just give me a little wider range because if if these aren't my my always use tongs, there's something I need just you know offhand. It's usually when you have a piece too big or too small for your other tongs anyway. I don't know. We'll see where they fall into the usage category. I used them all day today. I used them all day yesterday. And they were just fine. In fact, I didn't even have to change the pin. I don't know if it's just me, but before I draw that stuff out, I like to I like to square it up, get it straight, because it, it has no problem getting crooked on its own. It loves to twist and bend, and it's just easier. This is my my SMR right here. I didn't realize, uh, well, I, I got a new anvil. Um, this gal here, I'm going to miss. Uh, I'm not getting rid of it. It's going to stay in the shop for other things. But it doesn't have a horn, and it's driving me nuts. Like, I put up with it until I couldn't anymore. I, I made a hardy anvil, or a hardy anvil. I made a hardy horn, which was really just the horn for that. It was a 30 pound cylinder, solid cylinder. And I ground it down and cut it. And the problem is, we didn't heat the block when we welded it. So the welds were pretty brittle. I don't, I don't know if you'd say they're brittle. What they were was, it's like they went into the steel block there but they solidified before like becoming one with that steel block 
And eventually, after six months, it just kind of fell off. <laughs> I had to pry it off. It was coming off slowly. So I, I, I put a, a hardy stick in it. And uh, I also put some counterweights on it, uh, some, some conical shapes on the opposite side of it to kind of balance out when I'm using it. But the problem is it takes up that hardy hole. And if you're using a hardy hole for several different things, it gets a little annoying because it weighs about 60 pounds now. It was about 30 pounds before. And then I added all that other stuff to it. But that's okay. That can stay with that. Some of the things I'm going to have to remake for the new anvil. Um, the nice thing is I could have two hardy tools going at the same time now. I really don't have much stock right now to, to just use to make my own party tools, but it'll come. Alright, the easy part's done. Now at this point, let's try to figure out where best to put two three-eighths holes so that they're equally surrounded by nice beefy stock. And this is just jaws open properly. 
I can get a nice bite. So you gotta remember, when you move the, the pin back, even an inch, you're actually decreasing your, your squeezing strength at the end, at the bit end. Like I said, I drilled those holes. I didn't want to risk throwing everything out of whack. Thanks for watching.